Hello, this is Beth again, YouTube Pagan Challenge, question number 13. And it is, do you, do you use divination and what type? The answer is yes, I do use divination. Quite extensively, um, in various ways. Um, go crystal grid and incorporating tarot cards into it is something that I do a lot. And I don't, first let's just preface, I don't see divination as kind of that, ooh, I can tell you what's going to be in your future. I think it's a very outmoded thing, not that we can't transcend time and go forward or backward to see things that are going to happen or have happened in your history or ancestral history. I think that is perfectly possible within the realm of divination. I do not think as far as like, oh, I want to know my future is really going to get you the biggest bang for your buck out of any divinatory system. Um, I think if you're going for that route, kind of the old model of using divination, it's not as powerful. And divination can bring so much empowerment into someone's life and really help them change things that they want to change in their life. And I think that's extremely important. And I just thought of something I want to grab. I'll be right. Okay, I'm back. And you didn't even know I was gone. I bet. Except I told you, so you did. Um, I think divination can be a very powerful thing. And you can do things outside of things like tarot, which I love, and oracle cards, which I love. And those are my two main ways of using divination. I use those two. And you can also do things like create your own forms of divination. These are goddess tiles I made for a class on witchcraft that I took when I lived in Salt Lake. Um, I been through several classes with that group. I'd done their 101 and like their 202, I guess, 201. I've been through three, I think I've been through two or two rounds of classes where we had to do stuff on divination. And I think I did like numerology the first time and then maybe I think tarot. I don't remember. But I knew that when I was taking this class, I did not want to just do um, tarot, which I was very into. Oops, let's get you. There we go. Upright. There it is. Um, I was already studying extremely hard, and I felt like I had already studied that quite a bit, and it wasn't exploring a new aspect of divination, which was kind of the point, was to go somewhere else and not study what you're already studying. And so... I just decided to create my own, <laughs> and that's what I did. Uh, that would be Hebe. At their goddess tiles, um, they had some issues. Um, if you can see how it paints chipped off, the acrylics stuck, and I don't know if that's... They aren't cured enough. I can't remember if I put a varnish on them. I don't remember when I made them. Um, I'm working, looking at clays currently to possibly market small batches of them. I think that's Juno. But it focused on goddesses, that's a Troika, that I've been working with or interested in working with. Just anything, any goddess that fascinated me at that point in time got thrown in to the goddess bucket as you were and I knew I wanted 28 tiles to represent that's Crowedwin the cycles of the moon so there's three that are not goddess there's a troika unknown and I'm having a brain cramp on what the other freebie was might have been moon brain cramp but, um, so there's three that are unassociated with an actual goddess, but everything else, with the exception of, um, the fairy, 
one of them um, was based on a book from the Porcelain Dove. And probably when I, if I do actually produce this, we'll change it probably to Hermione. She's much more known in the books in print. Porcelain Dove, great, great fairy tale if you're looking for a smart, interesting book to read. Eris. All hail Eris. So I focused on green are maidens or what I can I classify as a maiden. And Eris, she, she doesn't strike me as a crow. She doesn't strike me as a mother. And so I decided to put her in more with the maiden aspect, even though she's not really a maiden maiden. Does that make sense? Um, red would be mother. And anything that's the dark is crone energies. But I decided on, you know, the aspect of chaos as creation kind of spoke to me as in the maiden. I, mean, I could probably argue crone for her too. Sophia, the gnosis, the beginning of knowledge. So, you know, this is one of the things that this took, divination has taken me off. That's Rhea. This is, which one are you? Are you calling in? I still get confused. I have a cheat sheet. Hold on, Hestia. I have a cheat sheet that I still use on these. Um, some of them I still. Space cake what they are, Epona. So, you know, there's ways that you can take divination into different aspects of, okay, here they are, it was spiral, that's what it is. Okay, so my three unassigned goddesses, spiral, troika, and Unknown. And I chose to do these three are in a blue as opposed to a black to separate them. So and there's so much you can do with divinatory forms. And these actually end up a lot of times, um, I pull one per week. I find anything under around 30 or 40 is really, really hard to do um, longer readings with. Um, you tend to repeat things. And these are... This set is my personal one. I will pull um, goddess tiles. Sometimes we'll be called to pull for a client, but most part, those are my personal tiles that I use. Um, so that's one form of divination I use. I use a lot of tarot and oracle cards also in my divinatory practices. Those are my main, main uses of them for that aspect of my spirituality and um, runes I do use um, but not necessarily for divination they uh, tend to manifest themselves in my art more than they have in actually learning them as a divinatory system so I don't really consider myself divining with those at all very interesting, though. I love reading about them and learning about them, but at this point, I haven't really been called to actually throw them for people or myself, I'm just incorporating them. I think, too, part of it is I don't have a rune set that I like, or I have not found a rune set that I've liked. So I think that could also be a game changer when that happens whether I make my own or I buy one I think that also might spark something a little different of other than just using it in art runes and artwork like the Agam are cool and things like that too those are very interesting and I've kind of read tiny bits on them but never really have delved into them so yeah, cards, really, for me. Um, and I think, really, in the past, I don't know, couple of decades, the cards, tarot, and oracle decks have just blossomed from something that kind of was just this 
kind of it went on this set pattern and people didn't really deviate too much from what they were creating and like too I've noticed that like a lot of the early early oracle decks are often called tarot decks and they're really oracle decks even though they're labeled as tarot I don't know oh, got bang sorted okay trying to grow them out because I'm bored with my haircut and I want to do something else with it and they're in an awkward phase but back to divination enough about my bangs but yeah that's really where I go is the text the decks just such beautiful imagery and the thing I like about using cards is that they tell a story they bring things out of our subconscious and our psyche that just doing um, an intuitive reading, I like that word better than psychic, doing an intuitive reading for someone does. There is something that gets conveyed in a picture, even if it's something so simple as like you know, a water jug for Hebe. She was a water bear in Greek mythology. Or, you know, the complexity that comes in with many tarot decks, such as, like, say, the Star Child with sacred geometry and things like that. You know, that tells a story that, you know, you don't get if you only do intuitive readings for someone. But when you pair the container of... When you start pairing, you know, everything together, your intuitive reading with the container that, say, like row holds because you do have a container with tro no matter how intuitive you reach you do have like a parameter of this tends to be this but when you mix it with this this all changes and how it relates to each other takes that intuitive reading to a whole nother level and so it's always kind of annoying to me when people are like yeah it's just kind of like an easy way out to use cards which is kind of bullshit because I don't need cards to read for someone. I can do it without cards. I can read intuitively their energy. But, you know, and why that is a skill, but when you start putting it with this skill of being able to put that into with cards and stuff like that, it just creates this whole new thing that is even more than just an intuitive reading it's not less there's more study that goes into it because you got the intuitive part you got to study and practice you've got the card part you have to study and practice and if you do something like tarot tarot is in depth there's a lot of study that goes on I've spent like freaking I started reading in like the late 80s I spent a lot of time over those decades learning tarot. I spent a lot of time working with Froud's Fairy Oracle just because it's so freaking awesome and it's just as in-depth as the container of tarot is. It's a whole different container that uses Fae and it's just freaking brilliant. So, you know, it's like those are systems you have to learn. Even the most intuitive Oracle cards you have a system to learn, a new whole framework to place this intuition in and to help inform that person's psyche and their subconscious that you don't get with just a straight up intuitive reading. And that's why I love the cards. They're just so juicy. They make everything yummier, as it, as it were. You know, they give you more to focus on, more to look at, all that kind of stuff. It And that's what I really love about divination is using those things that speak to you and those things that um, call to you, especially with like tarot for me and oracle cards. I really love oracle cards too. Um, there's something there that just makes it more and the being able to use them for spell work, for crystal grids, um, bringing energies into your life that you need to, telling a story. His stories are easier to understand for people than just, this is what, when it comes to apply to their life, 
the roundabout way and the back door is sometimes easier for people to access than the front door. And I think Tarot can really bring that in for you. And, you know, runes have their own background. Right? They're not, you know, there is a certain pictorial aspect that comes with these. And they're a lot pithier than, say, tarot decks in a way. Because you don't have as much to elaborate with as you do in the picture card kind of thing. But there's been a lot of power put into things such as, say, runes and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's my cheat sheet for painting. It's not painting, but too. <laughs> it's actually held up. I've had this for a couple of years, and it's, it's remained relatively unscathed by paint, which is kind of a minor miracle in itself. Um, but yeah, I do use divination. I use divination a lot. It's part of my job. It's part of what I do for my business and reading for people. It's also something I've just loved since for a long time and has spoke to me greatly over the years and still speaks to me greatly. And it's so nice to have so many different choices these days. It's almost horrible. <laughs> it's it's horrible for my pocketbook though sometimes. Um, but there's so much to choose from and people are more willing to explore with tarot and oracle cards, which you can just do whatever you want with, you know, are a whole nother ball game. But you're seeing a more of an exploration within tarot that I think is really exciting of people once again, kind of really pushing the parameters that we probably haven't seen since, like, say, the Curly Harris deck, when that really pushed hard against, you know, Rider weight images and the Golden Inn, you know, that whole variations of the Golden Dawn tradition and stuff like that. But I think it's much more open to trying new things and not just sticking with Rider weights. Smith kind of iconographic images and really in many ways those are such icons these days. Um, even more so than I'd say like Marseille type decks are. <clears throat> but it's, you know, because you get all of them. It's just so awesome because you have people who are doing Marseille decks. You have people doing the Rider Waite Smith kind of variations and Crowley Harris versions and then you got people like, you know, her who's creating these kind of new age um i yeah new i guess she's new agey but i mean creating these new parameters within like say akashic records and bringing say true geometry and tying different aspects in to tarot um wild unknown um anamelis os fortuna which yeah, no, I would say, yeah, she, she's Megan's deck definitely veers into its own territory with her use of animals and how they're used within the deck, even though, you know, you have the major arcana. It's pretty much, you know, it's like there's some, it fits the format of the Rider Waite Smith, but her take on it is very, very Megan's take on it. And her use of animals totally flips some of the meanings to make you, oh my god, that's just brilliant what she did. So I think the use of animals like in the animal, Animalis Os Fortuna and then also Wild Unknown, which I do not own, so I'm only speaking from watching reviews and people who have used it and seeing pictures, but I mean that she's, they've done their own take on Tarot too. So you have like this really beautiful renaissance I think happening within the Tarot and Oracle card world that opens up so much right now. And it is my main form of divination. So now I've probably made up for those two short videos that I just did on the sun and the moon. But yeah, those are kind of cards, the goddess tiles I made. Um, and runes to a certain extent are what I use.
right now. Um, I do play with the idea of, uh, well, actually, no, I am playing with the idea of what I call the found oracle. And because part of my spiritual practice is found items and using those in things such as crystal grids. Like, this is a found item. It's just a milky quartz that I found somewhere in the area. It's on one of my crystal grids. But the idea of use finding things and using those found items as a divinatory tool is very appealing to me. And I, the, um, excuse me, there's something called the Magpies Oracle, which is no longer available, but looks extremely cool, which is similar to the idea that I'm pondering and kind of gathering items as I find them. Because that's the thing about found oracles. You don't just create them, you find them. And hers was um, like kind of charms almost of like something that a magpie or a raven or some form of corvid would steal from you and take home. So I'm working on that concept too, slowly but surely. So yeah, that's what I, divination's huge for me in not necessarily the old oogie spooky parameter of divination. Oh, I can see your future. You're going to not die yet. So yeah, fun topic. I'll be talking at you soon. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.